Hey friends, welcome to Monday here on our social media blast that's warm up for Amazon Live. Thanks for joining us today. We are going to be talking about how do you know is the title of the show today and we're going to introduce a new product. We haven't talked about it on the air before. It's out there ready to purchase. This is a Star Maker video kit intended for ages eight and up. Now, this is uh, a video recording device and it was, how do you know? Well, how do you know how to start making video? And that's what this is about, to start getting your kids ready for going out into the social world. Video is a hugely important thing, understanding how to record, edit, make, produce, think about videos. That's what this is to help your kids learn what to do. Uh, the heart of the system is this nice, small, portable video camera runs at 1080p. It comes with a, a six gigabyte card, eight gigabyte, six gigabyte card already installed, which means you can record up to about 90 minutes of video on the card, which is about how long the runtime is uh, for the camera for one charge. Uh, a really cool device comes with a tripod that serves as a tripod or it can be an elevated tripod to get it to a better height. Additionally, you can turn this into a selfie stick, just like that. Use the rotatable head to get the angle that you want, and there you go. This is a fantastic device. Your kids can start learning how to do their own video with the Star Maker video kit from Explorer One. Now let me collapse this back down a little bit, and let's talk about the system, hello Pekka, good to see you Monday morning or Monday afternoon, evening for you. It's not Monday morning, it's Monday afternoon here, makes it evening for our friend Pekka who lives in Sweden in Stockholm. So it has a 1.3 inch screen on it, has a, so you can see what video you recorded and review it. It has a built-in microphone. It also has a microphone jack, so you can use an external microphone to have uh, better audio quality. It comes with a light, an LED light, so you can see, uh, can you light the subject? It has two, uh, two modes, a dark and a bright, and then a strobe flashing effect. The kit also comes with a blue screen, green screen, so you can learn to master chroma screen, so chroma screen is using a just a standard green background or you can use the blue background to add artificial backgrounds and effects. Or if you get high tech and really learn how to do it, you can have somebody in a green screen in front of a background and make them disappear. It's crazy what can be done with a green screen system. Now, it does not come with editing software. You need to download your favorite editing software so that you can then get the information out of the camera, either through the supplied USB cable or by removing the eight gig card and put it in your computer, edit it, comes out, and then you can publish it onto your social media platforms. Just use it from your family fun. Now, you can upgrade this to a 64 gigabyte card, which will hold uh, a whole lot of uh, 1080p HD video. Cool thing about this is it's also a camera, has four different JPEG modes, uh, 32, 16, 8, and 5 megapixels, if I remember correctly. So really, you know, compact device, but a very powerful thing. It also comes with a fun little clapboard, which actually has a great use. You write on it in chalk and you know what your scenes are. So if you're going to be uh, editing scenes, it's a whole lot easier to know what scenes you have. So you write down, you know, scene one or whatever, storyboard out, write your information here. And then when you start your video, you can simply go action or whatever other keyword you want to use with your clapboard. And you can start making videos that way. This is the Star Maker video kit. It's going to be on our Amazon live broadcast. You'll be able to see it in the carousel or you can go to our website, explorescientific.com right now and pick one of these up. If you want to be the hero gift giver this year, this is going to be a hot item. I've been showing it to some people and uh, in some other testing we've been doing. And to a T, every uh, woman that sees this has said, 
I'm getting one of those for my blank nephews, nieces, grandkids, kids, whatever. I think this is going to be a hit product and it's going to be fun to use. We will be doing some videos. We don't have any video from it yet. Uh, we're going to be doing some videos of it, some B-roll and actually video out of it showing what can be done. So it's going to be a great little thing to get the Star Maker video kit uh, from Explore One. So I'm going to clean up a little bit and move this stuff over to the table behind me. And we're going to switch to a pair of binoculars. I'm really hip on these binoculars. Yeah, you could say this is one of Kent's picks. These are the Bresser 6x21 Specialized Kids Binoculars. Uh, while they're marketed as a kid's binocular, these binoculars are the real deal. Metal body, glass, not plastic lenses, has a diopter so you can focus for your left eye and then correct the focus for your right eye. So both eyes are in perfect focus. Great price. I think it's like $29, bucks, $30 for this pair of binoculars. A great little pair of compact binoculars. Comes with an neck strap on it and little safety catches. So if it gets hung on something, it's just going to pop off and not just keep you tied to whatever it is it got hung on. These are the Bresser 6x21 Specialized Binoculars. Cool yellow-red combination. Uh, first time I thought, I thought, mm, you know, when I started looking at it, I said, that really grows on me. And what I like about them is they stick out. You can't just drop them in somewhere and not be able to find them. If you lay them down, you're going to see them because those colors are bright and obvious, and not a lot of things are out there colored by them. These are 6x21 binoculars, which means the eyepiece is 6 power eyepiece, so it magnifies everything you see by a factor of 6. Uh, or, if you want to think about it this way, it's like being 6 times closer to the object is how you see it with these binoculars. 21 means the uh, objective end where the light comes in is 21 millimeters across. These are the 6x21 specialized Bresser kids binoculars. Pauline comments come through. I thought I saw one pop up very early and missed it. And here it comes. Takes about seven seconds right now. Uh, is there movie software included? Otherwise, there is free movie, movie making download on the internet. Pekka, yes, good question. Thank you. There is no movie making software. It is a recording device. And if you want to, uh, well, the whole, the whole purpose is to, you know, use your video editing. Video editing. DaVinci Resolve, according to Paul, is a free program that will work fantastic with it. Uh, obviously, I'm not in a position to make any recommendations because I haven't tested any, but we have a couple of people here whose kids have been using these, and we're going to edit it into uh, you know, some, some movies to show you what kind of uh, quality you can get. You know, the, the, uh, the Star Maker video kit is going to boost some creativity for those kids who are creative or you know, it gives them the idea of how you start thinking about story and telling stories and how you edit stories together. A whole lot to be learned, and we all know how important video has become in our lives. It's just going to get more and more important for our kids, whether it's sharing their stories, you know, their they out there on their social media, or whether it's a, you know, a commercial application uh, like this one. You know, this is is video, if you will, and Paul edits a lot of video together. So uh, it's already a job and can be a, a whole lot bigger of a job uh, or will be for many people in the future. So thank you, Pekka, for that idea. Uh, the Specialized Bresser, actually it's Bresser Specialized Kid Binoculars, but I'm telling you right now, these are for more than just kids. These are great for adults. Uh, they you know, outside of my interpupillary distance, so, uh, you know, my eyes aren't the widest apart, but I think that's the one thing that makes them kids is the interpupillary distance just isn't as big, but I guess I'm just a big kid at heart, so I can use these binoculars with no trouble. And I'm going to sit here and focus over on Noah's machine real quick. And as you can see, I'm covering up 
the eyepieces and then focusing the other one. So I'm focusing on my left eye first, and there we go. Now both eyes are in focus, real easy to read, real comfortable, and there we go. So what time we got, Paul? It is now 1.40. 1.40, so let's talk about the moon map a little bit. This is the moon map from Explore Scientific. On one side, it has 24 objects, uh, objects, they're not objects, 24 features on the moon uh, that get you started uh, on your journey to become familiar with our closest satellite, uh, which is La Luna, the moon. Uh, fantastic object up in the sky. Um, can do look at it during the day, can look at it at night, uh, early morning, late evening, you just have to time when it's up sometimes. But these 24 objects will get you started on your journey, all easily visible with naked eye or with a small binoculars as well. On the back is, R is, on the back is an image that shows the Apollo landing sites on the moon plus the landing sites of some Russian uh, landers and one Chinese rover that's landed on the front side of the moon, front being the side that's tidally locked to Earth, the one surface we see all the time. Here's an interesting thing. We can actually see more than 50% of the moon because the moon has a wobble to it right? that's caused by tides on Earth, and its interaction causes it to wobble like this, and we can actually see right at 60% of the moon's surface because of that wobble, faces get exposed and aren't exposed to us all the time. So that's a really cool thing to catch it in one of those phases where it's wobbled in such a way that we can see something we don't normally see. It goes through that phase once a month. It's pretty cool to see um, a crater that's right on the edge of our visibility. If that crater was looking at Earth, it would look like the moon had a giant eyeball staring at us on it. A very cool crater. All right, what else do we want to talk about? Um, let's talk about a microscope real quick. Oh, there's that one over there. Didn't get unboxed. We'll have to unbox it for Amazon here in a minute. Huh? Hi? Coming up? Question? It takes about seven or eight seconds for the question to transfer over and come up. Um, Facebook, Connor Bradley, I know large apertures are more important, but is it worth buying a little companion like a small refractor on a long si alongside my 8-inch daub? Um, Connor, telescopes are like tools. Every, and I use hammers, you know, just as my go-to explanation because it's, Real simple. There's tack hammers, framing hammers, roofing hammers, uh, four pound sledgehammers, splitting mauls, jack hammers, pile drivers. They're all versions of hammers and they all do a specific job really well. Uh, you know, and heck, there's pipe wrenches. I have driven nails with pipe wrenches. When I had to drive a nail and didn't have a hammer, a pipe wrench will do. The point is, I think, Every telescope has its strength, right? And so playing into those strengths, and look, I'm wearing the same shirt I am in the silly picture of me. How about that? Uh, silly picture. Eh, it's me grinning like a goofball. Uh, that was worse. I calmed it down a little bit. Do you yeah, I know. We had a good time, you know, being goofy, trying to get one good picture. Take 7,000 and came up with that's the best one. Golly, talk about a bad subject. Anyway, so Connor, to answer your question, I think the answer is yes. You have to understand the differences, right? I'll redo um, it. And if you want. I'm, I'm fine with it, Paul. I'm, I don't like any picture I take. Um, you know, but that's the way it goes. I'm just. Uh, you want me to redo it? No, I'm fine. Just uh, don't blacken out my teeth or anything. So, uh, uh, Connor, you know, it's, uh, it comes down to what do you want to do with it? You know, uh, a daub is easy to use. You just plunk it down and go on down the road. Uh, you know, point to what's up in the sky. Refractor generally is either on an alt-as or an equatorial mount. Technically, a Dobsonian telescope is an alt-as mount. It goes round and round and up and down, right? An equatorial 
goes round and round and round and round, and there's some skills to learn to use it as well. So it requires mastering new skills, but most assuredly, you know, as you go into your uh, astronomy hobby, don't suffer from got to have a bigger, better, better scope. Uh, think about what you want to do, study which telescopes do that, and then pick the telescope you can afford to do it with. Um, because refractors don't have that central obstruction like a Newtonian does, then that means that the image through it is going to be higher contrast. Uh, I know lots of people who use Newtonians as, uh, um, um, uh, for astrophotography, and they do great work with it. Um, so it all just depends on what you want to do. I have Dobsonian telescopes. I have refractors. Uh, I have a telescope on an alt azimuth, and I have equatorial mounts. So um, it comes down to what do you want to do, and then proceeding down it. Don't just go crazy and start buying everything you can. Learn to use the gear you have, and then make a thoughtful choice on what is going to be next. How do you know what that is? Uh, I'm going to say it's pretty easy to uh, find somebody in your neighborhood with an through an astronomy club. And if there's not an astronomy club, think about starting one for yourself. And people who have the similar interest make your journey easier because you have friends to go down the journey with and uh, learn from them. They learn from you. Even if you don't have any knowledge about it, two people problem solving generally come up with the solution quicker than one person who is problem solving as well. What time we got, Paul? Uh, 47. 47. A couple more minutes. We'll talk about the Discovery 900X Biologic Microscope. Obviously, this is a microscope, right? It makes little things appear big, sort of like a telescope, which makes things that are far away but very big look big enough to see. So uh, they're just looking at different worlds altogether. So this is the Discovery 900 power, which means it goes up to 900 power microscope. Comes with a whole bunch of kit. Uh, a hatchery for brine shrimp. I knew those as sea monkeys when I was growing up because that's how they were marketed in Boy's Life and other magazines uh, aimed at children. I read Boy Scout, Boy's Life because I was in Boy Scouts and I always wanted some Sea monkeys, and my parents were like, nah, we're not going to spend money on that. So I never got to have sea monkeys, but that's okay. I now have some sea monkey eggs <clears throat> right here. I need to go hatch myself some neat sea monkey eggs. And I think the first one that hatches, I'm going to name after Paul. It'll be Paul Sea Monkey. I think that's what I'll do. That's, that sounds like a fun thing right there. Have a sea monkey uh... named Paul. So, uh, has a little petri dish to put samples in. It has a sample uh, maker, uh, so you can cut the samples for your slides. Uh, five prepared slides and seven blank slides, so you can make your own slides. Uh, all sorts of experiments you can do with the, <clears throat> excuse me, um, with the downloadable experiment booklet. Uh, very cool. And we'll talk about this real quick, and I'll put this down. The microscope comes with a filter wheel on it. So you can see things in different light. Clear, green, red, blue, uh, actually clear, yeah, yeah, yellow, green, and there should be a yellow one. It fell out. And then some smaller holes right here that cut down the amount of light going through. That's important because the uh, light coming through sometimes is so bright you can't see certain details and you want to cut down the brightness. That's how you do it, by changing the hole in the stage. So let's talk about the microscope real quick. Where the, the sample goes, the slide we're going to look at, the slide, where that goes is called the stage, right? So this is the stage right here. And if you look, here's a little light right here. There we go. Can you see that light? Yeah, you can see that light right there. So it turns on by flipping it up shines the hole right here in the stage, comes out. Well, that light is coming out through that hole, and there's nothing there now to look at, so we can fix that. I'm going to look at a piece of broad bean leaf. It's a little green spot in the middle of this slide. I'm going to slide it through the clips, and I'm going to center the slide on the hole, and now I'm going to make sure I'm at the lowest magnification. If you look right now, 
the big lens is in line, right? Which means that's the highest power magnification. We want to go to the lowest power magnification, which we can look right here. It says this is 100 power. So we're going to magnify this by a factor of 100. I'm going to tip the the microscope to a gentle curve or angle for me that makes it going to be easy to see. Another question for you, Kent. Uh, okay, question for me. Connor again. I've got a 120 F5 Acromat wanting to upgrade to a small ED maybe to start imaging. Uh, you know, depending on the, the 120 F5 Acromat, if it has a 2-inch focuser, pretty simple to start imaging with what you've got. I, you know, I'm a, a, a believer in start with what you've got and, and master, you know, what you can and then start moving up. Uh, don't necessarily look, necessarily look for more expensive things to make you successful. I know people that start, uh, that uh, one friend, he's never bought a piece to use equipment in his life, uh, new equipment in his life. Everything he has is used and he takes great astrophotography, astrophotography, astrophotography it. with it. Uh, so, you know, what you have may work depending on what it is. You know, an F5 telescope is, is a nice, fast telescope. Uh, you just need to, the, I tell people, just start shooting and then, you know, proceed down the road from there. So, real quick before we sign off and go into Facebook, I'm going to focus this microscope all the way down, right? And I'm going to look at it and make sure, and I'm going to move the slide until I see something get in the way. And now I'm going to start focusing. I'm going to focus very, very slowly because if you focus too fast, you go right past it. And the problem is I'm getting glare off the slide, and I see what's going on here. 52. I've moved the sample off the hole in the stage. So there we go. Now I'm seeing some green. And so it comes to focus. I mean, literally, watch my hand here, folks. Okay, so there's all the way down, and now I'm going to turn the handle, and right there, it's in focus just like that. A 30-second of a turn, maybe, something like that. So going to go ahead and sign off and get ready for the Amazon Live broadcast at 2 o'clock Central Time, Monday through Friday. Today's How Do You Know. We're going to sign off, come back on and join us. Are we just going to keep streaming or are we going to drop Yeah, I'm pick? just going to keep streaming, so you're coming back. Okay, so we'll be coming back, and when I come back, I'll be on Amazon Live, uh, so I may, re may be making references to the carousel and things like that that you can't see. Uh, we would appreciate it if you follow us over to Amazon Live, and if you like what you're seeing, give us a follow. For Explore Scientific, Kent Martz, catch you in a few minutes or tomorrow. Have a great day, everybody.
everybody. Kent Martin's here. Welcome to Money's Broadcast from Amazon Live. Today's show, how do you know? And today we're going to be introducing a new product. Haven't shown it before. It is the Star Maker Video Kit. How do you know how to edit video? Well, and shoot video? Well, you start doing it. And this kit right here for ages eight and up is a great way to start. The Star Maker Video Kit has a bunch of stuff in it to get your kids ready to start making videos. Let's talk about what comes in the kit. I'm going to move the box out of the way so it's a little bit easier. Boy, my nose is itching this morning. Allergies are just driving me crazy. I haven't sneezed yet, but I bet I do here in a few minutes. All right. I know it's really weird. This is the heart of the system right here. This small, compact video camera has a rotatable head. This head will rotate 270 degrees so you can set it up. You might be able to see this, want to see the screen and see the shot. The screen is a 1.3 inch screen and get it framed up so you can see it and manage the shot, right? It comes with a tripod. Now it's attached to the tripod, but it comes off the tripod for handhold or whatever. It also has an extendable boom on it up to 23 inches tall that lets you raise and lower the height of the tripod. Additionally, this is a pretty cool feature. You can also use the tripod as a selfie stick. Right there we go. Hi, how you doing out there in video world? This right here is a great way. I know, I knew, I said that for Paul, right? So, because I knew he would have a boisterous comment as well. Cool little camera. Comes with an eight gigabyte card already installed, which will allow you to record up to nearly 90 minutes of video on the card. Uh, the card will, uh, the battery in it will run for an hour and a half on a two and a half hour charge time. Let's see, what else? Has an external jack, so you can put an external, a jack so you can put an external mic to uh, work on your sound quality. It also comes with a little studio light so you can have the bright setting, the dim setting, or the always fun strobe setting that will just be a joy to watch for hours on end. So Paul's... You see? Oh. Our one of our studio... Oh, I see what you're doing. Boom mic, right? Yep, studio Good boom idea. mic. I'm, it's got to be the only jack on there. Won't go. Too big of a jack. Yeah. Wrong kind of jack. I bet there's an adapter. That's yeah, the smaller one. So see, this is live. We just tried something, you know, without. Well, I had never looked at without pre-testing. So yeah, we've only had this in the studio a couple of weeks, and uh, but it'll these take are. It. You see, it's it's the smaller. Yes, yeah, the one. smaller one. Yeah. yeah. This one, you, this one won't go. It's, in, like, it's the pro old phones. Yeah, the, the old iPhones that had the the jacks in it. This mm -hmm. would not go in there. It's too big. Yep. So it was worth looking. It was at. worth trying. So now we know. We just won't do that again. Certainly won't do it on uh, uh, some platforms. We're going to be on with this thing. So I have show. This has been seen on some some pre uh, work we're going to do for some other broadcasting. And there's been a number of. It's almost. I'm the only man that's been in, involved in these shows, other than one person who's doing some fashion stuff. But lots of women have seen this, and every one of them goes, wow, I'm getting that. They want to be the hero gift giver this year, and they know that their eight and up kids, grandkids, nieces, nephews, neighbor kids are going to love something like this. Hey, Noah, I don't have the uh, uh, live screen up. Can you, can you come click F whatever? So anyway, once you get the video, you're going to have to get the video out of the device. You can either remove the 8 gigabyte SD card or use the supplied uh, USB cable to get the camera hooked up to the computer. Copy all your video's files off into the computer you're going to use and then use whatever viditing, vid, viditing, video editing software you have to uh, the work. Free, the best free one is the Okay, DaVinci Resolve is a great free one. There's all sorts of paid ones out there as well. Now, one other piece of cool kit it comes with is a green screen, blue screen. It's a nice uh, sheet. It uses green screen or blue screen. Lots of different colors work. 
but typically it's green screen, but there's some blue screen as well. This will allow you to uh, learn to play with and how to edit in fun different backgrounds, uh, virtual backgrounds on your videos. And the last piece of the kit is a Hollywood style clapboard. Right on this with chalk, not supplied chalk. Uh, and so you can start your scenes so you know what each scene is. It's going to make it real easy to see what's going on if you record, keep track of the scenes that you're recording. You put on here and you can literally have the fun of going action and then starting the scene. This will make it easier for you to find the specific video clip you're looking for when it comes time to edit your video. This is the Star Maker Video Kit. It's a new item out from Explore One. Explore One has been a kid's brand for years uh, from Explore Scientific. You can see it over my shoulder right about there. There we go. Uh, that, that was hard to do backwards and at an angle. So anyway, and Paul's over there just going goofball. So we do have the chat function here on Amazon Live up and running. If you have a question, comment, observation, or just want to give us a howdy, please do that. We would love to hear from you. Uh, likewise, uh, if uh, you're so moved, click that follow button so you can get notified when we go live uh, every day, uh, Monday through Friday, almost always exactly or around or close to or not, 2 o'clock Central Time every day. So I'm going to move this stuff back to my table. We're going to switch items, but I just want to say this is an awesome device. Uh, hopefully next week and with a couple of weeks we'll have some videos some kids have made to show as well to show what kind of quality can be done with this new camera and video making kit from Explore One. All right, so moving along, spend a minute talking about the Bresser Specialized Kids 6x21 Binoculars. I don't know why they're called specialized, I guess, because they're special? Don't know. But these are 6x21 binoculars, uh, rugged metal construction, glass lenses. These are not toys. While they're, while they're kid binoculars for ages 6 and up, these are not toy binoculars. They have really nice eyepiece size holes, uh, 21 millimeters of objective power, and these are fantastic image uh, capture devices. I, I can use these. You know, I think what makes them kids is the inter interpupillary distance only goes so wide. Well, my interpupillary distance is apparently kid size because I can use these with no trouble at all. That made Paul chortle over there. And I'm looking in, in his ear right now. And Paul, you need to trim the ear hairs. It's a, uh, you're, you're getting the argon forest growing over there. So, uh oh. He's got his old knife out, got, his, got a big old pocket knife out. He's, he's digging inside of his ears now with it. That's, that's a yeah, man card right there when you trim your ear hairs with a pocket knife. So, 6x21 binoculars. They're real binoculars, as I said, no, glass. I was doing that. You narrated it, so you cannot hold that against me. I'm not holding it against you. It, it is a real deal. So... Real binoculars, nice focus. You can focus on your left eye. Yeah, you can't know that. You can't hold it against me at all. And has a diopter adjustment on the right eye, so you can change the focus for each eye and get them both perfectly focused, making your brain happy and your eyes happy when you look through the binoculars. These are real binoculars. They're not toy binoculars. They're called kids' binoculars, but these are not toy. And you can spend not a whole lot more money. What is going on with the screen over here? <laughs> is, oh, it's that. It's, oh, you're running the uh, the uh, c celluloid melting in the camera yeah, because see. it was running too slow. Yeah, there we go. I knew what that was. Burning, melting celluloid, getting ready to I set an entire free effects. Getting and ready I'm to like, set, hmm. preparing to set an entire an entire theater on fire. All right, See, not along. all of them work. See, this one just blends you out. Moving along, this is the Explore One 20 power bino binocular microscope. This is not a biologic microscope. This is a, uh, so where you're looking at very thin samples and light coming up through them. This is not that. 
Paul's got some pictures here we'll show in a second. It of comes with some samples, and I'm not... I'm not. I didn't open these. I'm not going to open these samples rocks. But you can look at rocks and. Didn't they open it? No, they've already opened them once. Not this one. This is another one. Uh, yeah. Let me see. Hang on. It's been. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. I will rise to the challenge. It Produce my pocket knife. It's go? tape. It is. It is opened. So let's see what happens here. See if I can do this without scattering them everywhere. Boy, this thing is really stuck in here. Got to be smarter than... We are trying to open a gate this weekend at a baseball game I was at. And took three people to open it. And we decided the gate was smarter than, than we all were. But we finally figured it out, so I guess we got our smart card back. So I'm going to pull out this green sample, which is probably some uh, jade, would be my guess. I can't, you get, uh, I can't get it out. You can get um, back Lucy to the knife. in here, and she knows exactly what those things are. Back to the pocket knife. She's a huge rock person. That would call me, make her a rock hound. I don't... I, okay, so this would be... Phosphorite. This is phosphorite. Phosphorite? Yep. So I'm going to put it on the stage and take a look at it and try to use my best descriptive skills to tell you what it looks like. Okay. And we need to get more pictures of this stuff, but right now Paul's going to get you, hopefully... What am I supposed to be doing? Wow, that is beautiful. Looking for the B in the coin. Oh, and you're looking at you're not looking at the B. You're looking at no, the, I'm looking the at this rock. We don't have a picture of the rock. This is fantastic looking. It's three dimensional because it is a binocular mic, uh, microscope. So I'm literally looking at this in three dimensions right now. I can tell height and depth and angles. And boy, that is just a beautiful piece. A multicolored rock. Get my finger down here and bump it a little bit. Do some like a macro, micro, micro photography, micro photography. Micro? No, this would be, this would be macro. Mm-hmm. Fantastic looking, beautiful. Curious. It looks like it's a mile tall. Let's see what we do. I'm gonna really pull this in. Please. Yeah, but I, I don't can't. I don't. You're not gonna get it. Can you zoom in more? Uh, I'd have to bring the... Use digital zoom on it? Yeah. Anyway. I can. And I will. It's still not going to look like what it looks like through binocular vision through yeah, the microscope. Yeah, but they can kind of see it. Yeah. It's a beautiful green, but shiny different colors. It's just spectacular. How it's rainbows of light coming off of this um, phosphorite. This is gonna kind of be cool. Let's see. Let's see how bad the digital there is. There you go. Let's see what you're looking at. Yep. Not quite. In f yeah, I think it may be. So let's go to a different rock. Let's go to oh shale. That's gonna look very shaley. So I know a girl named Shaley. My daughter's friends. Ugh. Hey. So here we go. This is a piece of shale, and it is a uh, very, uh, it looks almost like a concretion of some sort, almost sand. It's not what I thought it was going to look like. You know, and there's shale around here where you see it in hillside cuts where roads have gone through hillsides. It's always a good place to pick up some really cool different rocks. And you know what layers they came from? It gives you some ideas. You can start... Um, looking at, you know, uh, learning more about the geology of that place. Looking at this, it looks like I'm looking down on a Himalayan mountain covered in snow almost. Um, it's given a, with a one real sheer drop off because uh, you can tell it's, it's like it's like I'm looking at a circle. It's like I'm looking in the circle of, of the eyepiece and it looks like the 
rock is coming up into the image. It's a really cool effect. Um, it, it truly is three-dimensional because you're looking at it with two different angles. And you can close one eye and oh, close the other eye and see. But boy, when you open up both eyes, just a fantastic uh, 3D effect. So you got the coin or the B or anything? You got the B. You got the B? Well, let's fly into the B. Uh, no, let's not. So I believe this is a carpenter bee. We found it out in the parking lot a couple of years ago, and we it was uh, already it, it had already, already passed deceased. away. It had already gone on to the bee heaven across the bees rainbow bridge. Uh, rainbow so bee bridge. It's about time to start collecting critters up again because our supply is uh, running lost. low. They they get broken. You know, grasshoppers and crickets will get pretty brittle and. You know, uh, and then the dried grasshoppers and crickets also don't smell the best in the world either. So, if you have any questions... There's the bee. You're not going to talk about it? I see the bee. You can see its compound eyes, the little hairs on it. Uh, truly remarkable to look at. Grasshopper leg. Here's a grasshopper leg right there. That leg is about, uh, maybe the entire leg is maybe half an inch long or a little bit longer. Giving you an idea of what the three dimension, you know, the, the the scale is. I wish we had the penny, old Abe Lincoln's I head. I mean, why do you want the penny so bad? Because it shows. Because people understand what twenty power is when they see the penny, right? Well, the, I think they understand what twenty power is when they see the well, bee. Yeah, but no, nah, it's the, it, it's a bumblebee, right? But every, everybody knows what an American, everybody in North America knows what an American penny looks like. I know what a Canadian penny looks like. Um, they used to give those away in the cereal boxes. You know, you get free currency, and every now and again, somebody was supposed to get a really expensive one. I always got just a bunch of Canadian money. Yeah, I'm sure that they never gave away, you know, whoever won that free penny prob or free expensive coin probably threw it away. Yeah. Or, or, you know, Mom dumped it out and just chunked it in the trash free. It was another That's just a penny. Waste. That's just a penny. Yeah. Yeah. So I always got like a ten pence or something like that. Canadian so anyway, coin. there you go. I don't guess. Yeah, all right. So I don't see the. Uh, yeah. The. Uh, I, I put the search in for penny. Penny, popping up. No, no so search. So we'll we'll go on without penny. She she'll no survive without us. No search results. So I can put the, the moon up. It has, the moon. It has an LED light here on the stage, so you can top light everything. In here, there's a lot of top light and then because of studio crash. lights, but. I would have loved to have had this when I was a teenager, you know, really curious about the outdoors and looking at leaves and, and bees and butterfly, a butterfly wing. we got to get a butterfly wing in here and take a picture of it. Poor butterflies. Because uh, butterfly wings are beautiful moths, things like that. I would have had fun using this in the great outdoors. So we've gone from a microscope where you can look at, you know, big things, right, to a microscope to look at little things. Now this is the Discovery 900 power microscope. What that means is it can magnify things up to a factor of 900, which by golly is really, really small. I'm going to take the microscope out and show you what's in the kit here first. It comes with all sorts of things you can download and use the experiment book that will guide you through this process right here. Uh, it has a hatchery for brine shrimp. I got the sea salt. It has a hatchery for brine shrimp. These are brine shrimp eggs. They can last for years and years and years and years. Follow the directions. You can grow your own brine shrimp. Don't eat the brine shrimp. Uh, and uh, I. Of, of sauce is going to make it taste better. I don't know, you know, they're just, they're just directions that says don't eat the shrimp. So uh, probably not food grade shrimp, I'm, I'm pretty sure if you will. Sauce isn't help. <coughs> a wee bit might be enough. I know it wouldn't. Boy, it wouldn't take much marinara sauce. Yep. So anyway, that's probably true. Comes with red and blue dye, so you can make your own slides. And by slides, we're talking about the ones that are very, very thin that light will go through. You can make your own. Red and blue dye, by the way, is food grade, so if one of your kids eats it, uh, their mouth is going to be blue and other things are going to be blue later on, a day later. Moving on. Or red. So, tweezers, a couple vials, a beaker, uh, some pokey tools, as I like to call them, and a little safety scalpel, not sharp, 
Uh, I'm sitting here pressing my thumb into it, not cutting me. And also comes with Squish. five prepared slides and seven blank slides. That's where you use the slide cutter and things to make your own slides. I'm going to pull out the slides now and put the case back over here out of the way. So how do you know what small things look like? Well, you use a microscope, right? So I'm going to open up the prepared slides and we're going to take out, while we're going to pull out random selection here, we're going to pull out a slice of apple. So I haven't looked at the apple in a long time. Don't remember what it looks like. So here's how you do this. This thing has a, a mirror on it so you can shine a light <coughs> Excuse me. up into the hole in the stage. The stage is where the specimen goes right here. There's a little hole. Light comes through that hole. Real simple and straightforward. Going to reflect the light from the studio or I can flip it over and voila, there is a, an LED, LED right there. And the on-off switch is just flipping it over. If it's over and down, it's off. Flip it up, it comes on. And now I can shine that light straight up into the stage. Going to take my sample, and I'm simply going to slide it under the clips and center up the specimen in the middle of the hole in the stage. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I'm on the smallest lens. The smallest lens right here, the shortest one, is the lowest power up here on top of what's called the turret. This tells me it's 100 power, so we can go from 100 power to 400 power to 900 power. So that's why it's a 900X microscope. Also has the ability to tip to get to a really comfortable viewing angle. So I'm going to run the focuser all the way down. And I'm, Paul's going to get you a tight shot here, I reckon. And I'm going to take my glasses off so I can see in the microscope. And yes, I can see there's something in there. And I'm going to start turning it real slowly. And I have now, our, oops, disappeared. I can see my eyelashes. So I'm going to focus on it. So back here, here's all the way down. And if you're watching, that's all it takes to get in and focus. We're talking literally about, I don't know, 16th or 32nd of a turn. People will call and I'll say, it's like you're barely turning it. And I go, it's not in focus. Do you see, move the slide. Yeah, I see it moving. Okay, slowly focus. As slowly as you can focus without almost not turning it. And they go, oh, wow, I see it now. So it takes a little bit of skill to focus this. Now then, this comes with a filter kit right here. And the filter kit uh, is a wheel, not a kit, a filter wheel right here in the stage. And I can go from a hole with no light to a yellow filter, red filter, blue filter, and then varying sizes of holes to cut down the amount of light. Why would you want to do that? Well, with different colored light coming through, you can see different structures in the cells you're looking at. So those uh, uh, filters, different colors, allow you to see things that you would miss under uh, simple white light that's coming up through the stage. This is the Discovery 900X Biologic Microscope. Great for kids. What does it say? I think it's six and up. Eight and up, excuse me, ages eight and up. Kids interested in biology, this is a way to begin learning. Comes with an experiment book that describes a whole lot about what's going on, as well as gives you directions on how to do things like grow the brine shrimp. You can also use the salt to grow uh, salt crystals. You, the brine shrimp have to have salty water. That's why you have the brine, because you make a brine with the salt and water and create an environment that's perfect for the um, uh, thriving, the hatch and thriving and following the brine shrimp through their stages of life in the hatchery that comes included with the Discovery 900X Biologic Microscope. So we've gone from microscopic stuff, now we're going to go into Big stuff that's so far away it's microscopic. That's where a telescope comes in. Over in the carousel you're going to see this is the CF400 blue carbon wrapped telescope. So it's a uh, 70 millimeter telescope 
with a blue fiber, uh, carbon fiber wrapping, uh, has a tripod, a left, right, up, down tripod, nice and smooth, easy to use, comes with a red dot finder right here, a couple of eyepieces, and a smartphone adapter so you can get your smartphone hooked up to this telescope and use your smartphone to take pictures through the Explore One CF400 carbon wrapped telescope. Fantastic little starter telescope. Uh, have a friend who uses one like this on his big Newtonian telescope that he takes pictures with. Uh, he adapted it to take a little guide camera, a little camera you put in, and it tells the computer processes a picture and as it moves it tells it wants to keep that image on one pixel in the camera and so the computer program tells the mount how to move to keep that star on that pixel meaning the camera keeps tracking really smoothly all the way across the sky so this is the CF 400 uh, alt as telescope from Explorer 1 if you've been interested in getting started in astronomy, this might be the route for you. It's an inexpensive telescope. Now, be aware, because of light pollution and where you probably live, uh, you know, it's, there's a, not a lot of faint fuzzies you're going to see. The moon will look fantastic in here. You'll be able to tell that uh, Jupiter has bands and see the four Galilean moons. Those are the forms that Gal four moons that Galileo discovered uh, back in the early 1600s when he uh, perfected his version of the telescope and turned it skyward. Uh, you'll also be able to tell that Saturn has rings, unlike Galileo, who couldn't figure out what it was. He thought it maybe had ears or was uh, uh, an oval-shaped uh, planet, but he clearly knew because the moons of Jupiter did not move uh, in the same orbit as Jupiter moved, he realized they were going around Jupiter and upset the order, the way we looked at the world with simply using a telescope that's not as good as this telescope right here. Uh, so the Explore One CF400 telescope, great for kids. Uh, the moon's going to look fantastic in this telescope. Jupiter and Saturn are going to be small, but if you got good scene, get out in the morning. As the summer progresses, they will become evening objects. And so after dark, you're going to be able to look at them instead of getting up real early in the morning. You'll be able to go out in the evening before you go to bed and check out Jupiter and Saturn and some other planets along with our closest nearby stellar companion, the moon. Now, don't use that telescope to look at the sun unless you're using a safe solar safe filter because you're going to put your eye out. So let's talk about solar safe filters a little bit. This one, the sun catcher, would be just a little bit too big for that telescope. This is the 7 inch to 12 inch, meant for big Newtonian telescopes. It has solar safe film on the front of it. Basically, what this film does is reflects 99 point whatever percent of sunlight away from the front of the telescope and that keeps uh, harmful light from going through the telescope and becoming focused and putting your eye out. They're in the carousel for $77.99. They are also much cheaper. The small ones for ED80s and ED70s are very, very affordable. A great way to get into doing solar photography because uh, this is for visual use and you can use it for a camera as well. And you simply hold it up, you can hold this up, in, in fact I've used this very telescope, this very sun catcher to go out, hold it up and look at the sun during the day to see if there are any naked eye sunspots. There may be one, some, there was a couple forming uh, last week that may be naked eye visible and to see them they're got to be like 95,000 miles across which is tiny on the surface but uh, it's huge in our human view of uh, what distances look like. How this works is it comes with four pieces of foam shaped like this and four pieces of double-sided tape. You peel off one side and you stick it on opposite corners every cor so you get four corners. You stick that on and then this one's been cut off to use on a telescope. 
you get the four pieces, you center up the telescope, you make a little mark, you cut your foam to fit your telescope, and you want to cut that foam just a little tight. Why? Because if you don't, it's going to easily blow off or fall off. You don't want it to fall off. You don't want it to blow off, right? You don't want it to be able to be knocked off. You want that foam to be really compressed and hold that sun catcher to the front of the telescope. The front of the telescope being, back to the CF400, the front of the telescope is here. This filter is designed to go one place and one place only on the front, just like that. That's where you want it. If you use this on the back side of the telescope where the light comes out of the eyepiece, you're going to discover that it will burn through that, even through a small telescope like this one, it will burn through this reflective material almost immediately, and that is something you don't want to have happen because if you're looking at, at it and it burns through, you're not going to be looking at highly magnified, highly concentrated sunlight going into your eye. That will not be a pleasant you want to play experience. Scott's example? Yeah, sure. You ready? Yep, here we go. So it's a beautiful sunny day, and uh, we have uh, uh, you know our refractor out, and I've got my eclipse glasses on, and I've got my safe solar filter. Of course, the eclipse is not here yet, but um, I wanted to take a few minutes just to show you some things about uh, solar filter safety. Uh, the filters that we use is the uh, Thousand Oaks material. It is uh, rated to the highest uh, ISO standards. Um, and uh, ind actually independently tested by us as well. So just to make sure that those standards are met. So if you're going to use a telescope to look at the partial phases, and par the, let me underline partial phases to you, you use eclipse glasses to observe the sun in partial phases when it's uh, in total, if you're gonna be on the path of totality, you can take the glasses off and only during that time which is going to be roughly two minutes this time on August 21st, only during that time can you directly look up at where the sun is because it's completely blocked out. You'll see the corona, you'll see you know, lots of really cool effects that will they'll leave you speechless. But during all the partial phases, you have to have safe solar filtration. So how do you do it uh, properly? Uh, let me show you. First off, let's show you what you shouldn't do. What you shouldn't do is put on eclipse glasses and look through the telescope that's unfiltered. Uh, and I'll show you exactly why here. We're gonna point the telescope directly at the sun. And right now, we have sunlight coming right through the eyepiece. Um, you know, can turn that up a little bit. If you use solar glasses and look right at the filter material, you see it's already burning it's burning a hole right through the solar filter material. That is how powerful a telescope is. So this is definitely something you don't want to do. You can now see that there is a hole through there and that could be your eye. So this is what can happen if you think that you can use eclipse glasses to look through unfiltered telescopes or binoculars. If you do that, uh, the sun's energy is gonna burn right through the filter and burn right into your eye. So if you're going to use a telescope or a pair of binoculars to watch the partial phases of a total eclipse or just to observe the sun to look for sunspots or something like that, uh, make sure that you are using an over-the-lens solar filter that has the uh, proper ISO safety rating and all of that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this filter on. It's, uh, you can see how snugly it's fitting here. This is not about to come off. Uh, uh, but. Uh, you know, if you have a loose fitting filter, use tape. Do anything that you can to make sure that the filter is not going to come off. Um, and then the, the other thing is too, is that uh, finder scopes, um, uh, optical finder scopes are like little telescopes and they need to be filtered as well. In this case, I just have a red dot finder. There is no um, magnifying power to it, so I'm not going to use it to sight the sun in. The way I'm going to sight in the sun is literally as I'm, I'm going to look down at the shadow and align the scope up so I'm getting the smallest shadow possible of the telescope as it's hitting the ground. And now I can safely look at the sun 
and comfort. And look at sunspots and if we have partial phases going on in the eclipse, I'll see them all. And there you have it. A horrifying example of why you really don't want to use the film on the wrong end of the telescope, courtesy of our good uh, friend and founder, company president, Scott Roberts. All right, let's shift gears to the moon map. Over in the carousel, you're going to find the Explore Scientific 10th anniversary moon map. This was produced in 2018 to mark 10 years of the company. It's now 2020. Too hard to believe it's been that long since the anniversary happened. I started in 2019, uh, just after this happened. One side shows 24 features on the moon. They're easy to see. You started in 2018. That's, I started in 2018? Since 19 was pandemic. That's right. I started in 2018. Paul's right. That's right. I've been here almost five years in October or late September. Wow. Hard to believe. Okay. So 24 features on the moon. They're easy to see either with naked eye or with your uh, a smear, smear of pile pair of small binoculars like the 6x21 Specialized we looked at a little while ago. The moon will look fantastic in those. At only six power, you can see a lot more detail. So it gives a lot of information about all sorts of features on the moon, which leads you down the ability to use a smartphone or other device to look up uh, a lot of information about those uh, features. On the back, we have a map of the same feature of the moon, which shows where the Apollo landing sites were, as well as mm, some of the Russian lunar landers and one Chinese rover, the Chang 3, is it, that's what it was? Chang Yi, Chang Yi, Chang Yi 3. I need to put that in my Chinese translator and see what it sounds like. Uh, shows where a Chinese rover landed on the Earth facing side of the moon. Now, here's a cool feature a lot of people don't realize. If you look at a round object from straight on, there's no other way to look at a round object from any other way than straight on because it's round, you can only see half of it, right? Well, because the moon is tidally locked to the earth, it wobbles just a little bit with the tides. What that does is it means we get to see more than half of the moon. We actually get to see about 60% of it. And there's some very cool features on the very edges that you can see periodically throughout the month. Always fun to see those objects. It's a great way if you have somebody who's interested in the moon to get them started down the path to doing moon observations and increasing their knowledge of the moon, whether through binoculars or a telescope as well. The moon's with us on any clear night, except when there's a new moon. You may have to get up in the morning. The moon's up in the daytime sometimes and not at night. You know, but you have to follow the moon if you want to study all the phases of the moon and see uh, the uh, shadows that are created and letting you see the features on the moon in different, literally in different light. You can see different shapes, depth, things like that. Those shadows, which is generally the best to look at right along the terminator where this, the moon is lit and it goes in a shadow, right there where it gets those really long shadows, really nice to see 3D terrain on the moon. And last but not least is the Wiltarian double-sided multi-latitude planisphere. This is a road map in the sky. This version is meant for anybody in the northern hemisphere from the equator north to 60 degrees, which encompasses a vast, vast majority of people who live in the northern hemisphere. 66 degrees, I believe, is where the Arctic Circle starts. So we're talking about nearly everyone. It's double-sided. So what it does is the north side, when you're looking north, shows you what you see in the sky looking north. The back side shows you what's in the sky when you look south on the same night from the same location, just turn around. Because there's two sides to the, the single piece of sky you see, that allows you to have much greater detail on the things that we have right here on the planisphere. And we got a video that shows you how to use the planisphere. Here it comes with me wearing a red shirt. Yay me. Channel for more how-to videos from Explore Scientific. 
<sighs> What's wrong? Brennan? Hi, I'm Kent Marsh with Explore Scientific. One of the great things about modern amateur astronomy equipment is the ability to with the use of a computer, an iPad, or an Android tablet, and a motorized mount like the Explore Scientific PMC-8. But what if you're just starting out or have a mount that is manually controlled? How do you find celestial objects? All you need is a clear sky and a Tyrian two-sided planisphere. This planisphere, created by renowned celestial cartographer Will Tyrian, is for the northern hemisphere. If you don't have one of these, you can find it in our online store. Some of our products come with a smaller planisphere that works like this one, but uses 24-hour time and Roman numerals. Honestly, I prefer this one because it's easier to read and contains tons of information. This planisphere is for anyone in the northern hemisphere up to 60 degrees latitude north. A planisphere works by aligning the month, day, and time to show what's in the night sky at any time of the night throughout the year. One side shows the northern half of the sky, while the other side shows the southern half of the sky. Now let's line up the date and time. Let's say it's 10 p.m. on August 25th. The first thing to do is find 10 p.m. and it will be in the blue portion of the planisphere, just inside the date ring. Move the date ring to the position on August 25th. Line up the August 25th mark to 10 p.m. You're done. Easy. You now have a map that shows what the night sky looks like in the northern hemisphere at 10 p.m. on August 25th. The cool thing about this Tyrian two-sided planisphere is that once the time and date are lined up on one side, it's also lined up on the other. Now we have to orient ourselves to make the map reflect what's in the sky. The North Star, which is named Polaris, is almost exactly due north and should be the brightest thing you can see in the, that area of the sky. Once you found Polaris, you're facing north. Hold the planisphere with the northern side facing towards yourself and position Polaris inside the metal ring so it shines through. Super easy. If you're facing south, simply hold the planisphere level with your eyes to get your bearings. With the map correctly oriented, you should be able to find your way around the night sky. I'm Kent Martz. And there you go. The Wiltarian two-sided, double-sided, multi-latitude planisphere for the northern hemisphere. Don't have one for our friends in the southern hemisphere. So. That wraps up the lineup of products for today. Moved along pretty good, but I want to go back to the Star Maker. Question. We have a question, all right. It's going to pop up on the screen in seven seconds after the Paul points at me. There he is, from Connor. Seconds. Oh, it's the same one. Same question from Connor. Question? Yeah, same question from Connor. No, there it is. New question, here it comes. Three, two. One, there it goes. Uh, this is from Marcus Jansowitz. Jansowitz, Jansowitz. I'm going to get it down, Marcus. Jansowitz. Sorry if this was covered before, but does the ES Exos 2 GT mount have a 28 or 40 pound capacity? Uh, or was the 40 pound just a test? Okay, I'm just going to answer the first question the easiest way I can. Yes, period. Question answered. Not fully, though. Okay. We state that for astrophotography, the Exos 2 GT with PMC-8, okay, I want to be clear, this is the Exos 2 GT with PMC-8. There's another version out there, the original version called the Exos 2 GT that uses a wired hand controller. Uh, that one has a uh, astrophotography capacity of telescope and camera gear and all the stuff associated with the, can with the telescope of 17 pounds. The Exos 2 GT PMC-8 with, or with PMC-8 has a rated capacity for astrophotography of 28 pounds and for visual 40 pounds. That's what we say. That's 40 pounds of telescope and everything else on it, not counting the counterweights, okay? So this is actual on the saddle plate, not on the counterweight rod. 28 for astrophotography and 40 for uh, a visual. Now, uh, there's a video out there somewhere that we need to get and dig up and use on one of these shows showing the Exos 2 GT with PMC-8 using or running with like 90 pounds, 85 pounds of counterweights hung all over it, going like a champ. How? Because we managed the balance very, very, very well. Uh, Lubo in China. Hey, Lubo, can you use this solar filter alongside with H-alpha filter to image solar flares? 
No, Lubo, I do not believe that's going to work. Uh, I don't know that 100%, but I'm going to go with as certain as I'm going to be certain without somebody proving me wrong that that's not going to work because the filter rejects uh, so much light, including the H-alpha, it just reflects it away. So it's not coming through the filter at all. So even if you had the H-alpha filter on the front and then on the solar filter or the solar filter and then the H-alpha, it's still not going to work because that sunlight, that narrow wavelength has been rejected by the uh, filter. Uh, it's just, and if it was there, it's going to be, it's going to be so dim, Lubo, that it's just not going to work. Um, and Lubo, that's a great question. The sun catcher uh, is meant for uh, a visual and white light use. Basically, you're seeing the white surface of the sun. What Lubo is talk, talking about is uh, H-alpha, hydrogen alpha is a specific kind and specific narrow wavelength of light in the red end of the spectrum that shows the flares, those dramatic pictures of big loops coming off the sun and coming back down. That's hydrogen alpha and a very specialized filter uh, that this one will not uh, accommodate. So, hey, there's Tyler walking in. To answer the solar question. What solar question? That Lubo in China had? Yeah. Can't, it, can't do it. Can't, that's what I said. Can't do it. Yeah. Because you're doing HA, which is going to get some of the prominences. Right. Um, the solar filter is just the white light. Yeah. The, you you're, get all the sunspots. You're, you're putting, you're putting, you're using a hammer and a screwdriver trying to get a, a yeah. sandwich. Or, uh, so I don't know. You can, on some, depending on if it's a different, which HA if you're trying to do, because there's different manufacturers right. that make right. different things. Um, there are some telescopes where you can, and you can Come do... You can do prominences here. Start over. Actually, so there are a couple cameras. This is this is Tyler. Yeah, it's been a long. We time call him since I've been Tiny one. Tyler. Yeah, Tiny. Even though I'm cut off half the head. That's because you're standing on the box. Yeah, that's true. I'll just squat a little bit. So depending on what telescope you have, because there are dedicated solar. It's weird seeing you eye to eye. Stand up straight. <laughs> There's there are dedicated solar companies that do solar scopes. And there are certain individuals that just use a modular device that you can just shove in the back of the, right. the focus. There's different ways of There's doing it. There's different ways of doing it. Um, with some solar scopes, dedicated solar scopes, you can do prominences and the crub, blah, 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 chromosphere. chromospheres. The, the, the visible the surfaces. The visible surfaces. Right. Um, then there are specific other things that you can just shove in the back of a, any other scope right. that just do prominences or chromospheres. But you can't do a solar filter like no. a sun catcher and an H-alpha filter. It'd be, it'd be an interesting test. Yeah. It'd be a very interesting test. Tomorrow night. you got work to do tonight if it clears off. So you can try that tomorrow. Yeah. Actually... We won't, don't, we won't test that tomorrow night. We can test that during the day tomorrow just to see if it works. Yeah. Because, Lubo, science. You have created a hypothesis. You actually ask a question. We've come up with a hypothesis that's not going to work, yeah. and we're going to go test it to come to a conclusion. Scientific process at work. Be curious. Curiosity leads to invention, or at least discovery. And we may discover... Yeah, you can do this with a long exposure or some or way. We burn a hole in my camera set. Or we're going to, no, we're not going to do that because we've got the <laughs> solar filter on it. Or we discover that it won't work. Either way, Tyler, we'll have discovered something. With the, I believe with the solar filter, you should be able to jack up the gain enough to where you can get prominences. Well, I don't know. I don't know. One way to find out. There's only one way to find it's out. It's reflected. If, it, if, it's, if it's coming through... A wee bit, it's coming through it's a wee bit. Through. It works. But how long is your exposure going to have to be to get that wee bit? Depends on how high the gain is. Yeah. So we'll experiment and, how much noise are you put in? and see what we can do. Thank you, Tyler, for coming running onto the stage, flapping your arms with information. And he left just like that. So, yep. anything else, Tyler? Or uh, 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 Paul? How dare you? I had Tyler on the brain. He's been gone for a week on vacation, came back. and You, you missed know, him. I've missed him. Just, I'm glad he's here. Because <laughs> so, no, no, he does a lot of work. 
I don't have to answer questions now because he's here to answer them for people. All right, so I guess we're going to go ahead and sign off. Lubo, thanks for that great question. Uh, something, you know, and that's the beautiful thing about this. We have access to our customers and, and, and people who are interested in astronomy or whatever, and they come up with novel questions that challenge our knowledge and creativity. Uh, I find great fun and, and amazement in that. So, uh, okay. on behalf of the voice, disembodied voice of Paul Newton, and I asked Noah Menard to wave. He's over uh, Marketplace Menard over on his Marketplace computers, but he's not there, so I won't ask him to wave. But if he was going to wave, it would look like this. That's what it would look like over there in the shadows. Oh, there he is. It, it looks like he's, this is his wave this Everyone morning, just now. Everyone wants to see you, Noah. Come here, Noah, and wave at the camera. Oh. There he went. He had a space cat on his shirt. That's awesome. He has a space cat or a cat in a in a, Base in, a, in, a space, in a in a helmet. Ah, very good. So anyway, I'm Kent Martz on behalf of the crew here. Thank you for sharing your Monday with us. We truly appreciate it. We are blessed with your time. If you haven't followed us, click that follow button so you get notified that we are here and can see more of this great content where we love to talk to our family of uh, people interested in science. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.